it is Tuesday, 17 September 2024. Now, when we woke up this morning, there was news feeds, at least on Telegram, that pagers that were being used by members of Hezbollah, which is a terrorist organization in the Middle East, primarily operating out of Lebanon, that their pagers had been targeted and caused to explode, causing between 1,000 to 2,800 injuries, of which around 200 are critical, and 10 confirmed kills. Now, right off the bat, because of who this happened to, the location, and the fact that all of these triggered at the same time, it's automatically figured that this was done by Israeli intelligence, most likely Mossad. And I have this picture up here because that's a little joke that's been going around this afternoon about what was the last message that came across the pagers. Now, what pagers were used? It was identified by midday today that this is the model of pager that was being employed by Hezbollah that their members had and was the model that exploded. It's been identified as a gold Apollo AR-924. Now this particular model uses a AAA alkaline battery, but it has a backup battery for the memory, which is lithium. There is no uh, indication of size of the backup lithium battery. My guess is it's probably around the size of a large watch battery, so it's not going to be very big. Now, the actual dimensions of the AR-924, it is two and a half inches in length, one and two thirds inches in height, three quarters of an inch thick. Not very big, it's a standard pager. Now a lot of speculation started happening right away. What caused the explosion? Was this the lithium battery being caused to overheat on signal and detonate? Or was this done using an implanted explosive charge? Now, I'm going to put this out there because I have not seen if there's a video of this yet. A way to tell the difference on the two. If this is an explosive charge, if there is security footage of a group of Hezbollah members in the same location clustered together, if all of their pagers detonated at pretty much the same moment, that is going to be an indication it was an explosive charge because the signal will go out, set off the detonator, detonate the, detonate the explosive. If this was a targeted overheating of the batteries to cause it to detonate, if you have a group of members in the same location huddled relatively close together, if they go off one after another, almost like a series, that would be an indication it was battery because each battery is going to take its own little individual time to get up to that critical point of failure. But people that are familiar with lithium batteries have been weighing in on the possibility of that option. And they are pointing out that lithium batteries have built in safeties on them to prevent that. They have multiple fail points on them to prevent them to get from getting to a point where they reach critical mass and detonate. They're supposed to outgas. And the problems that have happened with lithium batteries for the most part have happened where you had a battery that was outgassing because of some bad condition was going on inside. The lithium was starting to cook. The battery fail safes were working gassing out and then those gases caught fire because of a outside ignition source. 
And uh, people have pointed out that the lithium that is in lithium batteries is not the same as pure lithium. It's diluted with other substances, which will also lower its susceptibility to uh, something like that happening. <clears throat> Where re regular raw lithium, I guess if that gets wet, you do have an explosive reaction. Now, do I know of lithium batteries that have exploded? Yes, we had a little thing in the military with BA5590 batteries. These are the batteries that were used with our radios. These things were not small. You're talking a battery that's like six inches in length, six inches in height, two inches thick, and it weighed a few pounds. Now with those batteries, what we could do, it wasn't recommended, but what you could do with it, if you needed to destroy them, they had a vent hole on the side. We could punch through the seal over the vent hole, chuck it into a pond of water, and the battery would explode, and it would have about the strength of a hand grenade. But, like I said, that is a larger battery, not the size of battery you would have in here. The size of battery that would be in here I'm guessing is around the size of a watch battery because its primary power source is a AAA alkaline which is going to take up probably about that much of the space inside the battery on the back and then you're going to have the electronics up in here the circuit boards and stuff now down here I have a couple anti-personnel mines. This first one is an M14. I've done videos on this a while ago in the Historic Ordnance series. The M14 is around two and a quarter inches in diameter and an inch and a half in height. Its explosive content is around three and a half ounces of tetral. Over here, this is not in proportion picture-wise. This is what's referred to as an LC. It's a C3A1 anti-personnel mine. It's also been referred to as the Dragon's Tooth. And I have heard some people refer to it as the Explosive Carrot. This is an extremely small mine, actually smaller than an M14. Its height is three and a half inches. But the main body here is only an inch wide. And then the flange here on top extends out for an additional inch. Now the explosive content of this is only one-third of an ounce of tetral or Comp A5. These mines, for the most part, have been removed from the inventories around the world. It's one of the reasons why I haven't done a video on them so far. Now, looking at the pictures and the video footage that I've been seeing that is online of the event as it occurred. Now, when the event occurs, what you are seeing primarily is an explosion. You're not seeing a flame like you would typically see if you do have problems with a lithium battery. So, just from a general guesstimate from looking at the video evidence so far, it looks like it was probably an explosive charge. How much explosive? Well, there was a post that came out today which cannot be verified. I want to point this out. This cannot be verified. But there was a post that came out today where someone said that reportedly Israeli intelligence had intercepted the shipment of these pagers to Hezbollah at their source. They held them at the source for a few weeks under customs questioning. During those few weeks, reportedly they put one to three grams of high explosive inside each pager. That is not a lot of explosive. Uh, how much is that? Uh, basically about this much. It's not much. What type of explosive? I don't know. Now looking at some of the injuries that I'm seeing online, you are seeing a lot of uh, burn injuries, but
but that's going to happen even from a an explosive especially if you're as close contact from the flesh to the explosive when it goes off it is going to produce a small fireball that is going to cause burns but we're not seeing as heavy of a burn as you would see from lithium batteries i just want to point that out i did see a couple people in some videos where they were injured in their hand like they were holding the pager when it went off and we'll say that this is the pager here a little bit smaller than this but from the pictures the guess is the person was holding the pager for whatever reason when the pager detonated it blew off the front half of the hand basically from the knuckles forward the thumb was pretty much non-existent just a flap left and there was heavy injury down here in the palm now, going off of experience on this, the, that type of injury looks similar to what happens if someone has an accident with a grenade simulator, an actual small grenade simulator. It's a small explosive charge used during training exercises. You're supposed to toss them into bunkers. No one's allowed to be in them when you're doing live fire training exercises without using live hand grenades toss them in there and they go off. Each hand grenade simulator has about a quarter stick of dynamite in it, around four ounces of TNT, roughly. The injury that you get from that is comparable to what I was seeing in the pictures coming out of Lebanon from the hospitals. So my guess is the explosive content that they were able to fit inside these pagers was between one ounce to around three ounces of explosive. A lot of people have pointed out that there's not a lot of room inside a pager to stuff with explosives. You gotta keep in mind, plastic explosives can be molded. So if you open this up, you have a space between that circuit board and the outside casing. You can start molding the plastic explosive in there. And you find a location where it's a little bit deeper, that's where you put in your miniaturized blasting cap or your detonator. There are some that are really, really small that I'm aware of, stuff that's not classified, that's... I'll say less than half the diameter of this marker and they're only about an inch in length. But because of the explosive content inside that cap, it has the strength of a standard blasting cap. Now if this is being done by an intelligence service, they're probably going to have a lot better stuff than things I was aware of 20 some years ago that was out there that we had to be careful of and watch for from terrorist explosives in the late 90s up into the global war on terrorism. A lot of people forget in the late 90s, those of us that were in the military, we had to be on the lookout for terrorist bombs. Things like mail bombs, package bombs, and that type of stuff. And engineers, we got shown pictures of some of the stuff to look for, some of the components that could be gotten a hold of on the market back then. And we were shown miniaturized components that were available. And it's a guarantee that intelligence services nowadays, 20 some years later, have even better stuff than that. So is it possible they were able to get that much explosive in here? Yes. What type of damage would it do? Basically what you're seeing inside the pictures. When you look at the casualties, ones that do not have bandages on them, you see that they are missing a nice chunk of flesh that has been just blown away and a burn mark going around it. That kind of tells me it's close contact actual explosive charge, not just something burning. So, now one question that's been coming up, how would they have pulled this off? How would they have been able to target 
the pagers of the members of this terrorist group. And it's a lot simpler than you realize. So we have our terrorist organization here. Hezbollah. Now, for those of you that are not aware of it, Hezbollah now is not the same as it was back in the 1980s. In the 1980s, it was, you know, the raghead terrorist organization stereotype. You know, they're getting their arms wherever they can get it. Nothing standardized, you know, they're just loose mitt organization. That is not what it is now. Nowadays, it is essentially a professional military. They have organized units. They have a uniform. They have a flag. They have standardized equipment. And reportedly from what I've heard before I retired when I had to learn as much as I could on the different groups in uh, the Middle East for potential deployments so we knew who the enemy could be, Hezbollah has also gotten to the point they're so well financed they actually pay their members now. So they've gone from being a ragtag bunch of guerrillas into being a paramilitary. So, what do I think happened here? October 7th, the last year, Hamas attacks Israel. War breaks out in Gaza. At the same time, Israel and Hezbollah started uh, trading shots up on the northern border going into Lebanon. Hezbollah realizes they're going to get targeted sooner or later. They want to have a better contact with their people. And they have the money to do it. Millions of dollars pouring into them from outside sources, primarily Iran. They're standardizing their equipment. They're producing their own long-range weaponry and anti-tank mines and anti-tank missiles. They take some of these funds and they decide to improve their communications capabilities. Make it easier for them to mobilize their people instead of just using only word of mouth and cell phones calling each individual phone at the same time. Hezbollah goes to a middleman. Middleman says, I can do it for a cut of the cash. Tells the middleman what their needs are. Middleman goes to Europe. Start checking the European markets, finding the best value that meets the needs of Hezbollah. He has a cover story on how he's going to do this and who he's doing it for. Maybe he's saying he's doing it for some oil for an oil company or emergency response. Who the hell knows? He finds a retailer in Europe that can get a hold of a whole bunch of pagers for them, the same particular model. They haggle over the price, haggle over its capabilities, so on and so forth, makes that purchase. So we get shipments of pagers get boxed up in Europe, going to be sent to the middleman to a location somewhere in the Mediterranean. That middleman then sends those pagers on to Hezbollah. Somewhere in the process back here, someone potentially stopped the shipment, had a team go through, start modifying those pagers. Potentially, you have a person with a bank of computers starts hooking up to the pagers and also programs a number inside those those pagers, each individual one, that when that pager receives a call from that number or receives that string of code, it switches over something inside the circuitry causing the detonation. Now Hezbollah, they get that shipment. 
Big Box shows up there. Big Box then starts getting issued out to the units. Depending on how many they get, they either send it out to the cells, and it gives, gets given out to each, say, squad leader or platoon leader, or if they get enough of them, they start sending them out to each individual member. Each one of these cell phones, these pagers, is programmed the same that all these guys have to do up here when they need a mobilization, they make that call or send the signal out on the computer and then every one of these pagers goes off or a particular group of pagers goes off alerting these people that, hey, it's time to go. We then go to the following rally point, get our equipment, find out what's going on, and we re react Aloha Snack Bar. So what ended up happening, each one of these guys has their pager. Unbeknownst to them, each one of those pagers has been messed with. Israel has them pre-programmed, sets them off. They don't have to kill all of them. They only have to kill a few of them. They injure a hell of a lot of people. You now cause panic in the entire organization. Reportedly this evening, Hezbollah has notified every member inside their organization to get rid of cell phones, pagers, and radios to not use electronic communications to go back to word of mouth. So Israel just put that entire organization in the dark. That's a pretty good indication something's about to happen in Lebanon. And there's chatter that probably what's going to happen sometime in the next 24 hours here Israeli forces are going to cross the border, start going into Lebanon, and start targeting the remaining Hezbollah members that they've identified. Start taking them out one by one. There was a lot of talk online in the chat room even on why would Hezbollah give out pagers and that stuff and it's real simple you're trying to contact everyone in mass at the same time to let them know this is the moment so you give them all a pager sort of like what the fire departments do and ambulance services do or at least used to do they used to issue up pagers to their people all they had to do is dial up one single phone number and then all the members of that crew got the signal at the same time same concept, and it makes a hell of a lot of sense. It's just these guys got, out, got outsmarted. Their shipment intercepted before it made it to the middleman. And before it got issued out to all the individual people. Now do you understand how they probably got this stuff out there? Probably what happened? Clear as mud? It makes sense. And I actually applaud Israeli intelligence for doing this because this is really smart and this must have taken a, a pretty good effort, probably thrown together on the fly. I'm sure they didn't have that much notice from when they, one of their moles inside Hezbollah let them know that, hey, we're, they're going to be purchasing large amounts of communications equipment. They're going to be purchasing pagers this is the supplier. They start tracking the supplier, find out where they're getting them in Europe, intercept them on the way, do the deed, and then let the shipment travel on like normal. And make sure that it's not delayed so much that it would tip them off here that something happened. This is a well-run operation 
A lot of people are questioning why did they do this now? You know, what's the purpose? They're giving away a uh, tactic, technique, and procedure that won't be able to be used in the future. Well, it doesn't have to be if it's accomplished its purpose. Completely putting the entire organization in the dark and injuring a bunch of them. And I did point out this morning when I forwarded this on Telegram that this should be a warning to everyone in the militia movement. Not about uh, pagers and cell phones because there is no one issuing out a single model of pager or cell phone across the movement or even in individual groups or units. But maybe it should be a warning that we should be checking some of our electronics that we're being told is militia standard and we have to get. Things like, oh, Baofeng radios. How hard would it be for the Chinese government who controls the companies where those radios are being manufactured at to go through and do the same thing on those radios so that they can potentially use them down the road? And they won't care when those radios would start exploding if the target is a police officer or a security guard or someone at a lumber yard or a militia member or a 10 year old kid. They won't care. They're causing panic, they're causing chaos, and they're injuring some of the people that they want to, causing this same situation here in the US. So I would highly recommend militias, patriots, survivalist groups, if you have someone who is your electronics expert, your communications expert, have them go through and check your communications equipment to see if there's something really weird inside them. Open them up, have a look, you see something in there that doesn't look right. Doesn't look like it uh, fits into the electronics normally, that, like it's not supposed to be there. You might want to take pictures of that and spread it on social media so that other people can then start looking for the same thing. This should be a warning to all of us. And maybe that's what I'll put down for the title of this video. Now, for all, all my engineer brothers in the Patriot Militia movements, always remember essayons.